Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today, the video is focusing on the top 10 things you should do to your brand new Galaxy S10, S10 Plus or S10e once you get it out of the box. And these features will also work on the S9, S9 Plus, Note 9 and the upcoming Note 10. But let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and check out the first 10 things you should do out of the box with your brand new phone. Bookmark is a free website builder service that offers you the opportunity to have a website built from zero to 100% in about two minutes by just answering seven simple questions. They utilize AI and they call it IDA. And this service actually is pretty cool. By just answering those seven questions, it gets you from zero to a full website ready for you to customize to your liking. You can even open up an online store. So what we have today is the Galaxy S10 Plus. But as I mentioned to you guys in the beginning, this will work on the S10, the S10e, and even actually the S9, S9 Plus. That Note 9 and the of course upcoming Note 10 and what we have in front of us today is the brand new Galaxy S10 Plus. Now they did give it to us in this color at the launch event a couple of days ago and I've been using it for the last four days non-stop so I want to share with you guys again the first 10 things you should do once you take that phone out of that box. So the first thing I would say on the list is very simple. Most of us will set up our Google accounts, but if you don't set up your Samsung account, I want to mention to you guys that the Samsung account offers you a lot more functionalities than just your standard Google account. Google will automatically sync up your emails. Of course, you'll be able to log into your account, download your applications and so on. But Samsung offers the ability to actually restore data from your old device, text messages, call logs, things that you normally would want to be able to bring over from your old phone, and they're automatically synced up. And if you have the right level of account on the Samsung cloud, all of that gets just transferred in the moment you log in and you can customize all of those options. If you don't have it or if you haven't used it before, I'd urge you as a step one just to automatically log into your Samsung account. The second thing, of course, is going to be very easy to recognize is that this device does support an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor on the bottom and it's highlighted right there, as well as the ability of using face unlock. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to take you through the setup process. Let's go into the settings tab. And the first two options are right there, face recognition and fingerprint recognition. Uh, we can go in there and add different fingerprints. First thing you obviously need to do is set up a pin to it or a passphrase. And then after that, you can add a fingerprint. So I've already have two fingerprints. We're going to add a third one right now just to be able to demo this. And essentially, for the most part, it just tells you to go ahead and put your finger in. We're going to start scanning it. And it's very simple, it's very easy. Now, this is not as fast as what we've had in the past, but it's definitely very nice to have it in the front and not have to worry about, you know, if your finger is wet, if there's any kind of dirt on your finger, this is definitely very nice. It's 3D ultrasonic and it's very simple. So we'll go ahead and hit OK, continue, and we'll finish up the last part of it. And we are done. And pretty much that's it. If you want to add more fingers, you can. I have already basically my two uh, thumbs and then now we have one index in there. Let's go ahead and lock the phone, unlock it, put the fingerprint on top and we are right there. Face recognition is pretty much the same. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove mine and re-register it. So we're gonna say remove data and we'll go ahead and say register a face. So pretty much very simple. Uh, move your face closer to recognition. It explains how to use it. And here it's asking me if I do and I don't wear glasses. I'm gonna say yes, I do. And we'll go ahead and start with the first one and it's gonna ask us to put our face close enough with our glasses on. So now it's asking me to remove my glasses and we'll do it one more time. And here we're able to customize basically lift to wake, faster recognition, of course, stay, uh, stay, well, stay on lock screen. And I'll go ahead and say, okay, I'll lock the phone and let's go ahead and unlock. And it works very, very quickly. So definitely first thing you want to do as soon as you're done setting up your accounts is go in there and customize and the two options, both face on recognition and fingerprint at the same time, as that will enable you to have a much faster unlocking experience on your phone. The next thing on the list, a lot of us probably already know this uh, if you've owned a uh, Galaxy device in the past, uh, but the general default resolution that our devices come with. So if we go into the display setting and we'll go under basically screen resolution. Now out of the box, Samsung always leaves their devices at full HD plus. Now that's 1080p resolution. It's not bad, but when you have a quad HD display, you want to be able to use the full potential of it. So what I would recommend you doing, if you want to do that, go ahead and turn it on. And I, that's what I did here with the WQHD plus, or if you want to really save a lot of battery, you can always just default back to 720p and then just customize it from that point. But just to know that out of the box, you're not really using quad HD with any, well, at least within the last few years with Samsung devices, they've always liked to put it up at 1080p as opposed to 4k or 
quite HD. Now, some of the things that we like to do to be able to speed up our device. Now, in your case, I'm running a custom launcher, but let's say you're using the stock launcher and you want to speed things up. My recommendation for you is to go into something that's inside of your developer's option. I do have that turned on right now, but to be able to turn this on, go into the software tab and then keep pressing the build number until you're able to receive this option that says developer option is on or you are a developer. Now, turning the developer option does not actually damage your device. It doesn't actually change anything and you are able to turn it off if you don't want to have it. But the reason I turned this on is because one of the options that we have here is the ability of controlling how fast the system animation on our device can run. Most of the time, our device is set to have them as running at one time speed. If you run them at 0.5, I'm not asking you to turn them off, you're not going to get any kind of a different experience, but this, this system, well, the system will be a lot snappier. It'll work faster, it'll work easier for you, and everything will just load faster, and you'll notice a little bit of a pickup speed in your device. So on top of the fact that this is a very fast device, if you don't like to wait for those all of those animations that take some time, a little bit of a delay on your experience, turning that option there and turning them down to 0.5 will always help you. Now the next thing on the list is actually very useful, specifically if you want to be able to transfer your images, your videos, your text messages, your call logs, uh, all the information that you want out of your old phone to your new one, even if it's an iOS phone or another Android phone. And this feature is called Smart Switch. Now Samsung has this functionality built into the system. It's under account and backup. You go into Smart Switch and on your old phone, you could just go into the Google Play Store or the Apple Play Store and then just download the application called the Samsung Smart Switch. And the instructions are very simple. Are you trying to send or receive data? So this is building your new phone. You'll say, I want to receive. You want to use a wired connection. In the box, they do include a USB-C to a USB-C adapter. Now, this will work with your, uh, well, let's say your Apple devices, just plug in your lightning cable into this one. Or if you're using an Android device that has USB-C cable, just use the provider two options, connect them to your phone and use the cable option. Or you are able to use wireless. And again, as I mentioned, you can go select either Android iPhone or of course Windows Mobile or BlackBerry device. So very easy, very simple. There's also a desktop version of this and I've done another video on that and I'll try to link that for you guys in the description below on how easy it is to transfer your data from your old phone to your brand new Galaxy device. Next on the list we're going to start talking about enjoying our device of course and that's the ability of customizing your Dolby Atmos experience. This device supports Dolby Atmos and it does have an automatic functionality but I definitely would recommend you that if you're listening to music more specifically or if you're watching movies more or you're just listening to more voice conversations Conversations. You can personally customize the experience as opposed to allowing the automatic recognition and which sometimes work and for the most part it's great but if you want to have a little bit better experience definitely go through this option as well as go into the option here with the EQ under the sound quality effect and then customize the built-in EQ to your sound as well as the ability of customizing the listening experience using adapt sound just to basically get a better experience on your phone for your experience. Next on the list is the ability of customizing your device slightly beyond what your normal options are out of the box. There's an application called Goodlock 2018. Now, on previous versions of this device, let's say the S9 Plus and the S9, we had different versions, specifically when we were running on Oreo, to be able to even have a custom launcher. I'll give you guys a full video review there and link in the description below there, just to show you guys all the different functionalities if you're still running on Oreo, but if you're running on Pi, running one UI, these are the new options that we have and we're able to customize them. Now, the routines is something that we've seen before. And then the other option we have here is clock faces. That gives us the ability of customizing the actual lock screen clock faces. So what we have here, and we are able to just add different options. And again, just a lot of options that you can do there. Uh, the nice catch is actually a nice application that allows us to see all the different commands or the, the push notifications uh, that are basically sent and as far as sent us directly on the notification panel. So if you're not sure what keeps basically sending and waking your device all the time, the nice catch application will allow you to do that and of course you just need to install that i'll let that finish the next one is the edge touch you're able to customize the edge touch uh, areas as far as where the actual lighting starts and actually works for you one-handed uh, operation you noticed me using this little gesture here now i have gestures in the bottom of my screen and that gives me the ability of using normal gestures within samsung but this adds gestures to a whole new level it's added directly to our side so let's say we are in an application i go into the play store i don't have to reach down i just swipe down from the side I can swipe up to bring in recents and of course I can swipe down to well go back if I'm just the ability of doing so. So good luck gives us the ability of using that with the one handed operation and then sound assistant. It's a very functional application. Now, once you turn that on, you have the ability of turning on that little functionality and it props up in the little option right there and you can actually configure not only the sound to the main application, but I was listening to music before I can bring down the sound customly just for this app and keep everything else running at 100% or I can just match. You can of course jump back into the settings for an EQ option right there and the ability to go into settings, which takes you back into here. And of course, turn on the different options that you have. It's a nice little addition to your existing setup for audio and it'll pop up. You can customize how long the actual little pop-up pill here stays in front of you. 
but again, just augments the experience with all the different options that we get within GoodLock 2018. Now, the next thing, of course, is something that you've probably used on other devices, but our devices now include something called an edge panel. Now, the edge panel is a nice little option that kind of a side launcher built into our device, and this will also work in case you're using a custom launcher. So you can customize the different options that you have in here. You can go in there, you can go into the settings tab and download additional edge panels, customize them, and then basically just make it to a much better experience. You can even add the dialer option here. So you say so you have a people's edge. I'll go ahead and turn that on here, swipe one more and swiping it around again will give me the access and you just need to give it access to your system and it'll be able to basically customize it to your favorites or you can custom add different contests so that you don't have to every time want to go in there open up the actual dialer go through your contacts and go into your favorites now the last thing on my list is something that i generally like to do on most of my devices and that's the ability of installing a custom launcher my personal custom launcher of choice is always going to be nova prime i have a license i've owned it for many many years and it's just the ability of customizing the different options that you have on your device, the ability of setting up different shortcuts on it, bringing down the notification panel, uh, and again, just getting up a lot of different things. And it definitely also supports custom uh, themes as well as icon packs. You can change the grid size. You have night mode that's built in. Uh, you have the ability of as well of backing up and restoring your actual launcher. So under the option of backing up, you can back it up and share it as an email. And you can actually send it from your old phone to your new one so that your exact custom options that you had on your old phone will cover and will transfer on the new device. The smart switch unfortunately does not carry a transfer any information outside of the standard Samsung uh, One UI experience, but it doesn't actually work with any third party launchers. And most launchers definitely will give you all the options to be able to customize. Like an example would be here, even with my custom application that I have here. So let's go into the application. This is called HD Widget. If you've never used it before, again, to check out my other videos, I've reviewed this one. And it's just a very nice custom widget that you're able to customize, not only the weather information, but being able to add different things like that. Keep it simple, keep it sweet. Uh, and of course, if you've never ever seen one of my other videos on this, this is going to be a bonus little thing at the end of this video. And that's the ability of customizing your lock screen and adding something like this. And this is a video of Goku Ultra Instinct ever so matching the, mat the back on this device. Um, and it's a very, very simple way of doing this. Again, the video for that will be in the description below. But again, S10, SM Plus, S10e will allow you to do this as well as the S9, S9 Plus, Note 9. This is a very nice feature and I'm very happy that we carried it into One UI. I hope you guys like this list. This is definitely the things that I always like to do to not only bring in my data from my old device to the new one, bring in my custom settings, but not only that, if you notice when I was going through this, I have a lot of applications and I spent a long time organizing these within folders within my launcher as well as directly within the app drawer. So that's something you want to keep in mind. You don't lose all of those customizations by just transferring a backup from Nova from your old system to your new one. And I really would have wished Samsung would allow us to do that. But if you're coming in for me, not one UI, let's say for me, an older version, Oreo version of, uh, let's say, a Samsung device, all of the settings may not transfer as exactly as they should be. So Nova does circumvent that and we have gesture customizations. Uh, and of course, the lock screen always just makes me buttons it up at the last second there just to get that best experience before I unlock my device. Um, for all the things that I shared with you guys, there'll be links in the description below for the videos that I've done covering these things. Uh, but let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of these options and what do you do to customize your phone when you get that out of the box? Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much and share this video with any of your friends if you think this would be helpful for them to get a better experience out of their brand new device. Uh, but other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.